Hey guys, it's me again, Maxim Burgerout from 100 Things to Do with Red Hat Management Products. Today, we're going to look at the existing integration between Satellite 6 and Ansible Tower, and that currently exists in two distinct ways. The first thing we're going to talk about is um, how Ansible Tower can read inventory data from Satellite 6. Um, that means you only have to keep track of all of your systems in one place, which will be Satellite 6, and it happens automatically there. And by connecting Tower to Satellite 6, um, Ansible Tower can just consume that information from Satellite 6. And I'll show that in, in a little demo in a second. Um, the second thing you can do is um, basically trigger a playbook run on new machines by adding a little bit of code to your Satellite 6 server um, that will deploy a tiny snippet of code on all of your new machines. And the new machines will then call out to Tower and uh, trigger a playbook run on themselves um, after they're in, uh, first deployed. So in order to share um, inventory data between your Satellite 6 system and your tower system, the first thing you need to do is create a synchronization user. And actually, you can actually build some filtering into that user account. So um, tower only sees the systems that you actually want to manage through it. Actually, it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, you basically have to give that, that synchronization account um, a specific set of permissions. And I'll show that later on during a demo. And in Tower, next thing you do is create a cloud credential consisting of the URL of the satellite server, the username and the password of the synchronization user, and you're good to go. So let's uh, take a look at the satellite and the Tower system here from here on. And, um, and here we go. So the first thing you need to do is uh, create a specific role for the synchronization account. So you go to roles, top, top corner of the screen, and I'll show you that I've already created the Tower Sync QA uh, role here. So I'll show you the filters I've created. Um, I've created a view host permission on the host resource that has uh, a filter that says lifecycle environments as QA. QA is one of my lifecycle environments that I want to limit uh, the, vis the visibility of Tower on. Um, I have a view host groups permission on the host group resource with the same search filter, basically. And then because Tower also needs to have access to the facts that belong to the hosts, I have a view facts permission on the um, facts value resource and that has um, a special kind of filter here. It's not exactly the same as host groups in the QA lifecycle environment, but it is, in my case, it is um, host groups that have QA in their name. Uh, for my environment, that is the best I can do. Um, filter effects do not filter on um, by lifecycle environment in satellite six at this point. So after we create the role, we create a user to go with it. So we go to users. We uh, see that I already have created the user in this case. It's called a Tower Sync QA. Okay, take a look at this user. Um, nothing specific, nothing really special here. Only thing I want to show is that it's um, it's been assigned the Tower Sync QA um, role, and that's about it. It obviously um, has a password as well. So next we switch to uh, Ansible Tower, and there we are. And then we go to credentials, settings and credentials here in the top corner of the screen, and we add a new credential. We call it, uh, let's call it Satellite 6 QA user, QA sync, that's even better. And we add it to the QA team organization because that's the use case I'm trying to fulfill here to show, save that. As the type of the credential, we select Red Hat Satellite 6, and then as the URL here, we add um, the URL to my Satellite 6 system. The username that I just set up and I pass the password. Now, if you do this, please make sure that you add the scheme here. So HTTPS colon slash slash, because if you do not add the scheme, uh, the, the credentials will not work. I'm gonna save this. And I'm going to grant permissions to use this to um, one of the users in my QA department. So it's uh, John Doe, he's one, he's one of the QA users, and I'm going to select him use rights so he can set up an inventory with this. And that's it for the credentials. So let me log out real quick and log back in as QA user so I can uh, demonstrate how this would work for a non-privileged account. Um, I'm now logged in as, uh, as QA user, user John Doe. I uh, go to the inventories tab. I already have a stub QA systems inventory set up. I go uh, into that. I add a group to it because inventories that are uh, imported are added as a group. I'm going to call this uh, Sat6 imported 
QA system, because long names are better, right? So then I select as a source Red Light Satellite 6, Red Hat Satellite 6, and you see that the cloud credentials that I set up earlier to sync from Satellite 6 are already pre-selected. Um, and I'm gonna check update on launch here. Um, if you um, read through my blog and watch the rest of the video, you'll figure out what that is for. Um, it's not important for now, but it will be important later. I'm gonna check save here. And um, we've created a group that we'll, we can now um, basically import from satellite. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna um, click this button here, start sync process. We're going to go to the jobs output to uh, take a look at this. And um, it's currently running, shouldn't take too long. And there we are. So basically you see that all my groups are important, all my hosts are important, uh, important they're imported. And if you go to the inventories right now, you can see uh, all my systems are here and you can actually see the variables that are important uh, imported from Satellite um, as variables now available in Ansible Tower. Things like uh, the name of the content view, uh, the name of the lifecycle environment, um, outstanding errata, um, IP addresses, um, op operating system names, basically everything you would want to know about the system to use in your playbooks is available now in Ansible Tower um, for free. As for the filtering of only QA systems, you can see here that I only have six systems available to me in uh, Ansible Tower right now. So if we switch back over to the satellite server, and there we are, you can see that the actual list of systems in my satellite server is much, much longer than only the six that are available in Ansible Tower. And we could actually take a look at, um, um, actually do a search in satellite and uh, for systems in the lifecycle environment QA, we, we actually get back the exact same six as we have available to us in Ansible Tower. So on to the next topic, which is how to call Tower from a new system to trigger uh, a playbook run. Um, and that works by enabling something on a job template that is called provisioning callback. And I'll show that in the Tower UI in a second. Uh, this gives you the ability to call a specific URL on the tower server from a new system and then post a variable to it. And the moment tower receives that variable and that specific URL, it knows that there is a system that wants a playbook run and it will trigger a run of the specific job template limited to the server that made the call to the URL. So it's actually pretty, pretty handy. Um, you need to enable update on launch on your inventory for this because the systems that are making this call are new. So they're at that point not known to settle it due to Ansible. And Ansible Tower first needs to sync, sync uh, the inventory from satellite again. So let's uh, take a look at the Tower UI and um, I'll show you the specifics of this. So if you go to the Ansible Tower UI and you go to job templates and then open up a template, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you have a couple of checkboxes and one of them is called allow provisioning callbacks. So if we enable this, you see what happens below here. Um, I get a URL that is specific to this job template and I get a host config key with it if I click this little button there. And the thing I need to do on a new system is create a curl statement in an init script or a systemd uh, service template or, or a, a, a cron job that runs at boot that calls this URL through curl or whatever and posts this variable to it. That's basically it. And the moment that happens, um, the first thing Tower does is resynchronize the inventory and then run uh, this specific playbook in this case, that's part of this job template. Now I'm not going to demo this right now because, um, the actual use case for this, the best use case is uh, to do this, to use those provisioning callbacks right after deployment. Deployments takes a little time. Um, and, um, if I wanted to show you those uh, snippets I use for this in the satellite UI, it's probably going to look a little weird because the font is pretty small, uh, in the, in the, uh, code boxes um, on in Satellite 6. So what I did is I put that uh, code on my blog and the link to the blog is below in the video description. You, you just click on there uh, and you get some some snippets to get you started to set up uh, provisioning callback URLs uh, in, in your own data center. Now as a quick recap, because this video is starting to get a little long, um, let's just talk about what we uh, discussed today. 
Um, you can connect your Ansible Tower system to your Satellite 6 system to share data. Um, make sure you assign the right permission filters to the sync user. You can use admin as well to get everything. That's probably not what you want to do. Make sure you include the scheme in the URL to your Satellite server when setting up the cloud credentials in Ansible, because that's a common pitfall uh, people sometimes struggle with. Um, you can also configure your satellite to make newly deployed systems reach out to Tower and call a playbook run on themselves. That's called a provision callback. Um, it's pretty cool, uh, but check out the blog mentioned below for some code snippets to get you started because that's probably easier than some showing everything here in the in the video. So uh, thanks for watching again. Um, hope you subscribe to the channel and we'll be back next time to talk a little bit more about Ansible platforms and satellite. And if you have any recommendations that I should about topics I should cover, let me know. And uh, else I'll think of something myself. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.